this project here in, uh, in Ontario is a key part of our strategy to demonstrate and, and uh, bring forward our commitment to sustainable fertilizer practices using the four hours uh, across Canada. And this is one component of a national North American and international strategy that our industry has to improve uh, the economic, social, and environmental outcomes, all three together for fertilizer use. So the sustainability challenge, I think everyone's seen these numbers, 9.6 billion people by 2050. One of our key goals in this whole thing is to ensure that the bait is on 4R nutrient stewardship and not simple programs that reduce the rate of fertilizer application and destroy the economics and the yields on farms. There's a lot more at stake now than it ever was. Uh, consumers are demanding more from their food. Uh, sustainability is an issue that's being driven down the supply chain. Um, as Grain Farmers Ontario, we have identified sustainability as a key priority moving forward uh, as an organization. So Grain Farmers Ontario wanted to investigate the Roundtable for Responsible Soy program, and a component of that was the 4R as the nutrient management designation for the environmental component of the RTRS program. So with the help of Fertilizer Canada, as well as Charlie Lalon, we went through 15 different pilot projects um, across Ontario, having Ontario growers go through the program, working towards you know, the sustainable use of fertilizers, applying you know, the 4R principles in place. The pilot projects, there was quite a bit of success, and I think for Ontario, we can build off that success. What's unique about four R's is the definition of those R's, right. It's the right source, at the right rate, the right time, and the right place. Okay, that's in the center there of a cropping system. That's what we call any nutrient, of course, has all four of those. And how do you determine whether they are right? Our definition for that is it moves the whole system, the cropping system, to greater sustainability. It's not just environmental sustainability. It's not just economic performance. It's not just looking good in the, in the social context, but it's all three at once. You can reduce the total impact of everything we do in crop nutrition to nine points, and they subdivide nicely into th three groups of three as well. What relates mostly to the farm level is your farmland productivity. We apply nutrients to increase productivity on farmland, and that's a great thing. It also applies to soil health because no infertile, impoverished soil can be called a healthy soil. It also applies to nutrient use efficiency. So if we put those three together, they actually have some trade-offs amongst each other, so we really need to be considering those three. Those are the three things probably most important to monitor on your farm. So, great thing about uh, yield uh, maps and yield data is that it gives growers an opportunity to do a lot of experimenting on their farm. So they get to figure out what is the best practices for their operation. Currently, I would suggest that maybe 10 to 20% of uh, um, farmers are collecting yield data and a significantly small percentage is only fully utilizing that data. It is a challenge to get growers to see the value in yield data. So OABA, working alongside uh, Fertilizer Canada, uh, we have been working towards the creation of a uh, memorandum of cooperation with uh, the Government of Ontario through OMAFRA. The key, key elements of, the, of this MOC is uh, the MOC basically outlines how the, the key stakeholders, which in this case is ourselves, uh, Fertilizer Canada and, and OMAFRA, are going to collaborate. I thought one of the key points within it is uh, the statement that's on the screen there that parties recognize that voluntary nutrient management programs based on sound science, expert advice, and public education is one component of a comprehensive approach to dealing with Great Lakes nutrient loading. So the agreement basically, what does it outline? Uh, 
It says that we understand that as agriculture sector, we have a role to play in improving the water quality in the Great Lakes. Um, the government recognizes that crop nutrients are essential to sustainable crop production and that the government agrees that the 4-Hour Nutrient Stewardship Program is an effective tool that can be used to manage crop nutrients effectively. I'm just here to tell you that IRCA has a Clean Water Green Spaces Program and that's where we have a few different options for you guys where we can actually provide you some funding to do tree plantings, um, we can also put in wetlands, we have some different agricultural practices, so putting in buffer strips, windbreaks, rock shoots, so erosion structures, as well as uh, we offer some funding for water wellhead capping. We've been doing research over the last couple years looking at different methods of applying nitrogen to the soil and different additives to add with the nitrogen fertilizer. We have had dramatic successes in terms of reducing ammonium volatilization loss when we inject the nitrogen into the soil and when we add inhibitors to inhibit urease activity and nitrification activity. Both of these have reduced ammonium losses from the soil as well as nitrous oxide emissions while increasing amount of nitrogen that goes into the crop to increase yields. Nitrous oxide is emitted from the soil after wet rain conditions. Onto those wet conditions, nitrous oxide leaves the soil and uh, enters into the atmosphere. So what we have been looking at over the last few years is methods of applying the nitrogen to the soil to reduce these emissions. The use of inhibitors keep the nitrogen in the soil in the forms that the crop can use without allowing as much going into the atmosphere. That way we can help to reduce emissions and help increase crop productivity at the same time. So it's a win-win scenario for both the environment and for producers. It basically went into an undertaking of rebuilding our John Deere air seeder so that we could put all of our fertilizer nutrients into the ground before we start planting and we could also shorten that time frame up so that we could do that in the spring and plant right behind it. We didn't have to worry about uh, winter weather occurrences taking uh, all our nutrients out and uh, yes the fields, uh, fields should be dry and they are dry and it does compress our uh, planting schedule a little bit but we may seem to make that work. I think what the 4-Hour Stewardship Program really does, it gives us a focus, a framework from which to, uh, to examine what we've been doing in the past with a different light. Um, it focuses on those uh, source rate, time and place, using best management practices, and just refocus our efforts on being more sustainable and working uh, in concert with more of the stakeholders in the industry. We're going to be adapting and adopting practices that enhance the placement and recommendations and certainly uh, being able to measure that outcome in terms of looking at reducing environmental impact. And so I think in, in the context of, of just looking at overall cropping practices and working with, with farmers on their farm operations, I think in just in general terms, we're going to do a much better job uh, at uh, nutrient management.